What's going on guys? I figured with the release of Halloween Kills, it was time to go back and adjust my Halloween franchise rankings. So I thought no better time to do that than now in the 31 days of Myers. No better way to celebrate Halloween than a Halloween ranking video. So without further ado, let's get into these rankings baby. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Fauci Cinema. If you're new to the channel, definitely hit that like and hit that subscribe. It would definitely help the channel grow and help me get to my goal right now of 2,000 subscribers. It would mean the world to me. And I love interacting with all you guys. It, it, it's fucking badass. I had to shout out Fright Rags as well. I know they, they put out a, some new Halloween t-shirts, so I had to grab myself the Halloween H201 thing of beauty one of my favorite in the franchise had to pick this bad boy up so if you have not go go to fright rags and check them out they're looking fantastic with the shirts they got going on right now but you guys aren't here for the shirt talk you guys are here for a halloween franchise ranking video so i think it's time to get into this bad boy and see if anything has changed with the release of halloween kills which by the way i'm growing to really 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 enjoy getting close to love it's getting up there now Alright, so now, currently there are 12 films in the Halloween franchise, so let's go break these things down. Coming in at number 12, I have Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 from 2009. I know I tried to give this movie another shot. I really did. I tried to give it a fair shake. Um, maybe if it wasn't a Halloween film, maybe that would have some influence on me to, you know, rank it a little bit higher. But it does have Halloween in the title, and it does have Michael Myers in the movie, if that's what you want to call Hobo Myers. I know a lot of my buddies on Killer Flicks and whatnot really enjoy this film. I, on the other hand, do not. I despise this film, and it will probably, honestly, always be last on my Halloween list. So Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, sorry. Bottom of the barrel, number 12. Number 11. Chad, I know you're going to be mad. Halloween Resurrection. Yes, I can have a good time with this movie and have fun. Uh, on my, my stream I had with Chad, we had a great time talking about the movie. I, I embraced it for what it was. If you have not checked out that video, go over to my channel pages and look up Halloween Resurrection Talk and you'll find that video of me and Chad live discussing everything about Halloween Resurrection. Uh, but I've come around to Myers and the creep in... in the shadowy in this movie but other than that the acting is really really bad the characters we don't really care about at all um, and just cheesy corny dialogue that doesn't believe belong in a Halloween movie and come on dude they use first person like camera no I'm not into that in a Halloween movie nope number 11 number 10 I got Halloween 5 the revenge of Michael Myers is it a good movie not really but do I watch it every year? Yeah. Because it, it flows so nicely in in the early Halloween franchise. Like, you, you watch four, you gotta watch five to get to six. You have to watch it. It's the middle of the Thorn trilogy, so you really can't leave it out or skip it. Yes, they Michael Myers' mask is terrible in this movie. Uh, he comes out of closets like a drunk guy. Uh, they kill off Rachel, who we really love, in, in the first 15 minutes of the film and give us... Tina, which we don't want. And Jamie is mute for almost 75% of this movie. And Michael cries because his tears have the power to heal. Yeah, that just doesn't work for me. But I'm still going to watch it every year. It's just probably more nostalgia than anything. Grew up with, with this one. So Halloween 5 at number 10. Number 9, I got Rob Zombie's Halloween from 2007. When this first movie first came out, obviously, I was very excited. Uh, we haven't had a Halloween movie in five years, and that was Resurrection, so anything would be better than that. And then we get this white trash version of Michael Myers that, when I put this movie in, I skip the first 40 minutes because I just don't care. We don't need the backstory like that. We don't need to know that he came from a white trash family, Rob Zombie, like everybody in your films. We don't need to know that. 
But once it kicks into the John Carpenter remake part, then I find enjoyment with it. I like Scout Taylor Compton's performance in this. I like seeing Danielle Harris back again, even though she does play Annie. Uh, Sheriff Brackett, played by Brad Dourif, is fantastic. He owns the role. He does a really great job. Uh, Malcolm McDowell does a great job in this movie as Do uh, Dr. Loomis compared to in Part 2. Um, so I think, the, like I said, the John Carpenter part of it is great, but the rest of it is, is not good at all. So that's why I have to have it at number 9. Coming in at number eight, I have Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers. I know Lee, my boy from Drum Dums, absolutely loves this movie. It's the wrap-up to the Thorn trilogy. Our, ans our answers are finally given to us about why Michael does what he does. And he's in a cult doing what they tell him to do. Me, I'm a big fan of the producer's cut of this one. Explains a little bit more of the, the details behind Michael and why he does what he does. Um, the ending is... Probably the ending is definitely better in the theatrical cut, unless you like Michael being surrounded by a pile of rocks, which is not what we look for in a movie, guys. Come on, it's never stopped me before, so I know it ain't gonna stop him. But the kills are brutal in this movie. Michael's brutal in this movie. Um, but the concept that he was in a cult and and they have to sacrifice, you know, the bloodline. Nah. I don't need that in my Michael movie. Even though the John Strode head explosion is one of the best kills in the franchise. But that's beside the point. Not enough to save this movie to raise it up any higher. But this is another one I'm not going to skip if I'm having a marathon. So Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers at number 8. Uh, coming in at number 7, Halloween 3. It is not this low because I don't like it. Because I absolutely love Halloween 3. I think it is a blast. Tom Atkins is the man getting all handsy with all those ladies in that movie uh we got the dr the i don't know what they are the henchmen in this movie are robots filled with the green slime all resemble michael myers from halloween 2 with that slow walk even includes dick warlock who played michael myers in halloween 2 in this movie so that was always nice john carpenter's back got the john carpenter score throughout this whole thing it's fantastic this is the anthology route that he wanted to go after doing Halloween 1. But then, of course, they made him do Halloween 2, and then this came out. And with the name Halloween in the title, people were pissed because Michael wasn't in it, and that's who people came to see. But if you ignore the fact that it, it has Halloween in the title, Season of the Witch is a fantastic film with one of the most brutal villains ever, Connell Cochran, who kills kids for crying out loud he, he kills the children which is the scariest thing ever which michael didn't never do until now but this is this is a son of a bitch he doesn't care about nobody uh, he said the plants align this is what has to be done and he doesn't think twice about trying to do it uh the master great the jingle's great the theme's great halloween three i'm giving it all the love it deserves number seven number six right in the middle halloween two from 1981 uh, it is a slower paced movie, especially in the middle part of this. Um, I will admit the hospital stuff in this movie is better than the hospital stuff in Halloween Kills. Um, the kills are, you know, the icon are iconic. You know, the finger in the butt kill, the syringe to the temple kill, the hot tub kill. Frank Riker, that one's for you, buddy. Boobies in hot tub. You can't beat it. You just can't write this stuff down. Um, but I, upon rewatch the other day, it, it definitely... I definitely had a great time with it, and you cannot watch one without following it up with two if you're going that route because it goes flows so well together. It could just be put together and be one whole movie, three-hour Halloween film. That's what we want, everybody, isn't it? So Halloween two, number six, number five. I got Halloween H two O. What's on my shirt? I know it's the scream version of Michael. It's Halloween nine hundred two one zero. That's fine, uh, but. It's nostalgic for me. It means a lot to me. I was 10 when this came out, so I was just in the height of my Halloween franchise love. Um, and I get hear a lot of shit about Chris Duran and his performance as Myers. I enjoyed it. I think he did a great job. Um, the masks, obviously, they used three or four. No, they used four masks in this film. 
That makes it a little bit rough to watch because they are rotating on and off so much throughout the film. But that really doesn't take away the enjoyment I have for this movie. We get Laurie Strode back after 20 years with Jamie Lee Curtis. We get Josh Hartnett as her son, John. Freaking fantastic casting choice. We get Michelle Williams in here. We get Jodie Lynn O'Keefe. We get LL Cool J. The cast in this movie is fantastic. We get uh, a cameo from Janet Lee with the Psycho Car. It works in this film. Uh, there's not a lot of kills, obviously, in this movie. But... The kills we do get, I really enjoy. Uh, the setting is different, obviously. We're not in Haddonfield anymore. We're in California at the prep school. It works because it's like an isolated area, you know what I mean? Confined inside the school. So Michael's in there, and the only way really to get around him is to, you know, kill him or take him out. And the iconic end of the movie when Jamie Lee goes back in and fights Michael one on one to the death, and it works. This summer, terror is not taking a vacation. Halloween H2O, number five. Coming in at number four for me, the newly released Halloween Kills. Uh, after first watch, I never would have imagined it would be up this high. I thought it would have been in the bottom four, three or four. But upon multiple rewatches, it gets better each time. The kills are amazing, obviously. All practical effects. The flashback scene might be one of the best scenes in the entire franchise for me. Um, Michael looks great. The Dr. Loomis look-alike, no CGI by the way if I'm not mistaken, that's all makeup effects by Christopher Nelson. Looks amazing, looks identical, could have used without some of the zoom-ins, but it is great. Um, we, we finally get to love Karen in this film. Um, the mob scene where they're kicking his ass, I actually really enjoyed. I thought it was a great scene, it looked great. Um, and the music kicks in, and then he just goes like to battle. It's that was a badass scene. Um, it's still fresh in my mind, you know. It, it, it could go up or down, but after currently right now, I have to put it at number four, and I think that's a pretty damn fair shake. I've seen some people have it towards the bottom of their list. I've seen others have it at number one actually, in no, number one, number two, number three, around that area. So it's a mixed bag when it comes to this film. But the more watches I think you have of it, the more you will appreciate it and actually start to fall in love with it. So, Halloween Kills, number four. Number three, Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. This was six years, no, seven years after Halloween 2. We went seven years without Myers being on screen. And then he comes back in this film, bringing back that fall, October, Halloween atmosphere. Um, I think the cinematography in this film is amazing. People don't like Myers Mask in this one. I actually love it. It's right here on the shelf. It's one of my favorites. I think it's it works. There wouldn't his original mask obviously got burned in the fire, so he would not be able to have that exact mask. And there's no way they would probably sell that mask in you know any kind of store. So he had to take what he could get that looked similar, and it's believable that that's the choice we got. A lot of people said he should have stuck to the bandage look. I don't know how I would have felt about that. Maybe if we had it at the time, I would be like, hell yeah, that's badass. But we didn't, so it would just be very weird to see that now. But it would be a, it was creepy the time he did have it on. We get amazing Dr. Loomis dialogue in this film as usual. He's pretty much the main guy. That's who we love. We get Rachel and Jamie and the connection they have. The sisterly bond, and they help defeat Myers in this film. It was, it was badass. The ending when he gets shot up by the police. You haven't got a police force! This is a classic. If I'm going to watch a Halloween movie, this is definitely going to be one of the ones that I'm going to pop in right off the bat. Because it has everything I want. The score is great. Myers is brutal. Yes, he has the hockey pads on. We can look past it. Yes, he looks like Michael Jackson in one scene. Thanks for pointing that out, Dave McRae. But this, is, this one really works for me. Number three, Halloween 4. Number two, Halloween 2018. You guys know that I adore this movie. This is what we got after Rob Zombie's debacle of Halloween 2. And that plot line came to an end, thank goodness. They gave us Halloween 2018. They brought Michael Myers back in the biggest way. James Jude Courtney dominated the role of Michael Myers. And then after Kills, obviously, no doubt about it, number one Michael Myers portrayal in the franchise for me personally. But he, he owned the role. The moment he got his mask back was so iconic. Yes, I hear people say 
should have been darker out, should have like a street light glowing when he put it on. I get it. I can see that. But it's still iconic to me. Coming out of the bathroom scene that was badass. Then he goes to the one shot scene where he kills those two women back to back in one take. That's incredible. It, it, he looks amazing. He looks... Fuck. I mean, it is brilliant. Everything about this movie. The soundtrack is badass. David Gordon Green brought Myers back to the big screen in a big way. I can't thank him enough for that. And he gave us this nice little trilogy that he's making. So thank you, David Gordon Green. It has everything I want in a movie. It has brutal kills. It has brought back Jamie Lee Curtis again to play Laurie Strode. I... They finally killed him, you think. But then they leave you with the, that ambiguous ending where he's vanished from the fiery basement and you hear the breathing and that's the end of the movie. It works for me. It's one that I go back to over and over and over again. I can't get enough. Can't not get enough. And also, oh man, I got peanut butter on my penis. Number two, Halloween 2018. And of course, at number one, we have John Carpenter's classic. 1978's Halloween. You just can't beat it. I once had Halloween 2018 above this, but I cannot do that ever again. After watching Halloween 78 a couple times this Halloween season, it just proves to you why it is one of the best, if not the best, horror movie of all time. The best slasher of all time. It's It sets the mood and tone for the what the franchise should have followed, but it bounced too far away. We got the mystique of Myers, he's there, he's not there. We got the innocence of Lori and, and Michael kind of taking that away from her. We have an amazing soundtrack, the theme that we've heard for the first time. It's so iconic. On a limited budget to make this movie and the cult and the following that it has today is insane. Like I'm sure John Carpenter never would have thought that this movie right here would have grown to this huge franchise with 12 movies, going to be 13 movies, all the masks, the merchandise, the figures, the posters, the box sets. It's incredible. And all because John Carpenter had a vision, and this is what he had. Um, and he is, Michael is probably one of the most iconic horror characters of all time. Um, when you think of horror movies, that's where I go, right to the Halloween franchise. And it's all thanks to Halloween 78. The mood, the atmosphere, the mystique, um, everything about it. Is he human? Is he inhuman? What? What is he? Is he a ghost? Is he the shape? And Dr. Loomis, played by Donald Pleasance, the best character, I think, in the Halloween franchise. And he is a shining star in this movie, and it really doesn't get much better. Dr. Loomis held this franchise together for so long and then whenever he passed away, Donald Pleasance, it kind of took a turn and it was trying to get back to where it was ever since. And I think with 2018 and Kills, it's climbing back up, but it still didn't reach the pinnacle of Halloween 78. And it has to be number one. It's number one on most people's list because it's just that damn good. It, For me, it, I gotta do, I gotta do a review again on this, but for me, Halloween 78, is a five out of five movie. I, I, it's, it's got, it has to be. It has to be. It's a five out of five for me. Perfect movie. Yes, the dialogue's cringy at times, but it's a perfect movie otherwise. I can't believe it. Another Halloween movie has come and gone. The rankings are redone. I feel like these rankings are pretty damn good, but I need to know your thoughts. I need to know your rankings. What do you guys have at number one? You don't got to leave them all down below if you don't want to. Leave, you know, your, maybe your top three. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Leave them in the comments below. If you haven't already, definitely hit that like. And if you haven't, also, subscribe to the channel and come back every Wednesday night for the most part. I have a live stream, a lot of interaction with, with subscribers and, and people that tune in. It's a hell of a good time. Rise to 2,000 subscribers. Let's make it happen. It will mean a lot to me. And I will see you guys in the next one and definitely watch out because it's almost halloween and myers could be anywhere have a scary